Okay, so hi Guru Santosh. I hope you are doing great. So welcome to Yourpedia Global. Like I'm feeling very happy having an interaction with one of our very, very good uh, alumni. So I want Guru Santosh, you to be very open with every answer to the question so that the students who will be listening to this interaction, they get highly motivated. Like there are many students who are targeting uh, their studies from abroad. Right. Yes. And I think that it's a very good opportunity. The students who want their career to grow and if they want to go for higher education abroad, listening to such alumni give them a very good confidence. Right. So uh, starting with this interaction, I want Guru Santosh you to tell like uh, something about your academic background when you were in India. What motivated you to apply to abroad? Okay. Um, I have done my bachelor's in mechanical engineering from NIT Andhra Pradesh and then like I, di I didn't get any job or some placements and I was preparing for government exams like in the meantime uh, why to waste time for these things and I just calculated the math like uh, how many positions are there and the, also it was the time of COVID so it's not possible to get a job at that time so then I joined masters like I have interest in, in manufacturing it's like uh, core topic of mechanical engineering. So I, I joined the University of Hyderabad. There I have seen the professor's profile. Like they, are, they have also done the PhDs from outside the India, from Germany and USA. So I thought I will be getting a, some good exposure with them. So they can also help me with the application process. And then in the meantime, I've seen the Europedia, uh, like uh, Vijayanda Sars video. And then I got more motivated about going outside and then doing a job in India under some company or something like that. And then I took a break for one year, like to have research experience and the documentation to get ready and the IELTS score, everything, so that I can apply a number of universities whenever I see an opportunity. So then like after one year, I got a position, like a joint PhD. It's uh, of three years. I'll be working two years in France at NSAM and one year in Australia from University of Sydney. Okay. Right now, so, I'm in France. Okay. So, Guru Santosh, your PhD is fully funded, right? Yeah, it's fully funded. Great, it great. Is, it is a Marie Curie Fellowship co fund. There is another fellowship. So, okay. you will have um, like there will be first ment and second ment. First is like uh, two years in France and one year in. Australia. So for that one year, you will get the all the airfare, health insurance, and the application fee. Everything will be funded by the Marie Curie Fellowship. Great. So uh, you got a fully funded position that were joint PhD, right? So yeah. Guru Santosh, uh, what is your field like in which research area you are doing your PhD, and what is the subject like? What subject you chose? Uh, like choose when you were applying for PhD, and currently, what is your research area? I have like the complete PhD topic was chosen by me based on my master's research because I don't want to get into new things and get confused or like again start from the scratch. So I have chosen the field additive manufacturing, which I have done in my master's and I worked in very good lab, ARCI. There I got exposure to all the technology and all the research skills. And then I was applying in the same field with the same kind of research projects so that uh, I will get at least to the interview calls and then maybe like 1% of chance or 2% to get into the position. So like oh, the master's field, I have decided that I should work in this. I was strong at this field. So I decided that now I'm working the same field, like uh, with additional testing of the materials. Now, mostly I'm working on fatigue behavior of uh, lattice structures made by selective laser melting process. Okay, okay, great, great, great. So uh, you are working in which department in your university? It's in mechanics. It's, it's in mechanics. And yeah. like, uh, you're working under a professor, right? Yeah. So what do you think, like, what all advantages you got, uh, like when you have, uh, yeah, like now you targeted abroad, like for your education. So what do you think that what advantages you got over doing your uh, like research interest, like growing in your research interest for this from this particular university and professor 
um, there are a lot of changes in me because i was not that efficient during the masters and here you don't have that extra time to do work because here it's like five days per week and also the lab will have like specific timings you cannot work beyond that so you have to do everything organized and you have to plan that things and within that eight hours per day like that we have to do for every week and then for, for a month it's like now i'm well organized and like everything goes in a well planned kind of thing okay so with this answer i got a question in my mind and that is regarding the work life balance okay so students have this thing in mind like when we'll be going to abroad or higher studies from abroad it may take us a very long time or everything will be hectic there so guru santosh in your eyes what do you think about the work life balance in abroad like if you are doing your phd from abroad especially yeah because here in you have to be very efficient in the eight hours and you don't have extra two days like in india and there will be like you will be pressurized by the supervisors or the things that going on in the lab because you will not get the time to do these things because of uh, it will be occupied by some other phd student or some other departments people and the work life balance if you come like you have saturdays and sunday if you are, for me i will just go out or travel to other other cities because here it's uh, very cheaper when compared to other like in india if you have the salary of phd and you cannot go to some other place and stay for some time and it's, it's not like that here you can go somewhere and you can stay for some time like two days one day like and again you can come back to work and you can do and you have many advantages for the students here okay so guru santosh what about the quality of life especially in france like you are doing your uh, phd from france so what do you think that what is the quality of life there i feel quality of life in my perspective is like having good food and good air okay Great. also maintaining like not stressful life and having the things done in smooth way and not get tensed so Great. i'm having very good air quality and i'm having good food here so it's i'm like pretty good here okay so guru santosh many students have a question in their mind that if you are targeting your like a uh, phd from abroad or your education from abroad what are the expenses that you have to bear before going to that particular country like the for initial expenses like that includes everything your ticketing your visa and every such formalities that you have to do before going to abroad so what about in your eyes what about that expenses how much total expenses you bear and how roughly how students can manage that yeah like now i have applied for the two countries like france and australia so i can tell like in france it just you need a visa application fee like 100 euros and then upon like giving the biometrics and the photographs it will take like 3500 something like that in the and then you have to have like airfare like one way okay. airfare like 30 to 40000 initially okay if you book early okay. and then you have to have at least two like one or two months of accommodation before coming to that country and also you should have like travel insurance for 3 months because here in france you will have social security to get that documentation on the card it will take some time so before that if you have 3 months of travel insurance it will be helpful i think if you have 2 lakhs in your account it would be good for france but it's not the case with the australia in australia like the visa fee itself like 90000 something application fee itself and then again for the biometrics and health examinations security check and this all will take again roughly 40 50000 yeah. so it will be like um, double the amount like you should have at least 40 lakh 4 lakhs something like that for australia a roughly for student who is targeting abroad he or she might have uh, somewhere around 2.5 to 3 lakhs initially in the yeah. account including yeah. each and everything each that and everything we- yeah that you want to bear for that particular thing right okay yeah. done so uh, how much stipend you are getting for your fully funded uh, like education your fully funded phd and according to you how much uh, how much like you are uh, expenditure you are making there and is there anything you are saving or students who want to target initially what they can save there okay for me in, in france um like it's like job come student 
so you will have all the employment benefits and if you take the scholarship uh, it's like 2375 euros gross and after removing the social security taxes everything like i'll be receiving 1850 euros in that you can save minimum of 800 850 euros you can save easily okay so i think the students who are like uh, who have this question in their mind that how much expenses or something like that if definitely they are bearing some expenses before going to abroad then after going there they have that much stipend that they can even save that amount in initial some months right yeah in just three months would be sufficient to get the amount back Back. Okay. Okay. Done. 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 Okay. So, uh, there there's a question in students' mind that if you are getting masters from, like, especially if you are getting masters from France or Australia, you can convert that masters into PhD, or if you are getting PhD, you can convert that PhD into masters. So, Guru Santosh, what is your comment on this particular statement? Yeah, it can be done, but in France, it is just one year of difference. If you do masters, it's like two years. If you do PhD, it's just three years. Hmm. so it depends on the student whether he wants to get because here in france if you have higher qualification we have better opportunities and we also have like high amount of stipends for the phd students than the master students with just one year like you will have the phd degree and here one more thing is like if you do masters in france and then if you want to do any phd in the same lab or like within the france it's much easier than applying from india Okay, so if you are targeting your masters and after that you want to do PhD, it's very easy to get your PhD there as well, right? Okay, so after doing like you might have explored options as well, Guru Sudarsh. After doing your PhD, what all options you have? Like if a student he has done the PhD from a particular country like France and all, what all opportunities he has further like after this PhD? Like uh, coming to industries, you can work in R and D departments. because one of my senior he is working in uh, engineering solutions of capgemini so he is like same like me like he came from india and he has done masters in france and he has his phd from the same my lab and he has like good knowledge of french he can speak french so it's easier for him to not easier like it's tough but it's he has better probability than the others like coming from india and if you don't have the language it will be like much more barrier to get the job so here i think you should have the language to have more probability for getting a job for academia and you can go for postdocs anywhere it's like much more easier from france like you have many labs in the french germany switzerland like you can go anywhere in the europe and also in the us and even you can come to india for to join as assistant professor something like that Okay, so uh, Guru Santosh, what all exams you have cleared before applying for this PhD position? Just I have written IELTS. Just that. Yeah. Okay, okay, done, done, done. Okay, so uh, there are uh, there's a question in mind of some of the students. Like some of the students, they are not from IITs and NITs. They are from some ordinary colleges, right? So, uh, what do you think that? can they target these type of top universities there are chances that what are things are seen what are credentials are seen if you are, if you want to apply for this fully funded phd i feel like your research profile should match the project i don't think like you should come from iit or nit something like that and because for initial screening process you just need a cgpa and like ielts score and some depends on the university but after that in the interview the professors will see like the students should be able to do the phds like he should have handled the pressure and he should manage the things properly like these kind of things they will see and then because technical things you can learn after coming to the like after joining the phd you can have the things like you can work on the equipments which you in general you don't have in india but here if you see the new equipments you should not get scared or something you'll get trained for everything so it's not a like you just need to have some basic experience with the same similar kind of thing then it's like more chance of getting into the position or the interview call than going with uh, new things i feel okay so guru santosh according to you what all things should be there in our cv and what all things can be included in our cv to make it more viable feasible so that the professors uh, choose our cv or he gets to reply on our mails that we are doing so according to you what a cv should mainly contain i, I think for, if you are doing from masters i think you should have some 
research experience initially which should highlight in the cv and then your education and the course work which you have done because they should know what are the courses you have done it's like completely different curriculum in france and they should know like if you have done this course then it will be useful for you in this phd then no need of giving some extra training or something like that they will feel and then you have scores and some social skills like some volunteering something like that and then um, some like if you attend conferences these are like added advantages like publications but i don't have any of these things i just have like good master's thesis and good research experience like related to the phd position which i have applied so it's more ch- like because of that i think i'm i got the position i have okay. good presentation in the interview with the supervisors there okay so means that means according to you don't have a conference paper and research paper it's just yeah. your master thesis and your yeah. research like the experience. research experience and even you have got a very good interview with the supervisor yeah. during the time of selection okay great so uh, guru santosh now my like last question to you is you were an alumni to yorpedia global right so according to yeah. you how yorpedia global has helped you reach this position and what all things were with like you got from here that gave you added advantage in getting the phd in france yeah uh, uh, like coming to the documentation i took help from the yorpedia i have seen the videos and drafted my documents and then i have finalized the documents and then i also took the help of my supervisor like he like from university of hyderabad is he also helped me then with that the documentation part was complete and for english proficiency test i took the uh, i uh, your pda coaching i have seen the other modules and then i have practiced in the youtube and then again with the ielts if you pay the exam fee you will get a course like one course for 30 days or like four courses for four days like that and also i took that and like it's in your pda is like initial foundation for me so that it will be like if you have good foundation then you can have good buildings like strong ones so it's it's it stand as that for me okay great so after looking uh, like after get, uh, looking down into this interaction many students will be willing to have a conversation with you interaction yeah. with you as well guru santosh so you are open for, for that like if students want to have interaction with you definitely we can have it in future right This yeah student, definitely will be many students who will be targeting france for their studies and i think you will be a very good person best person to guide them for that that as well right so yeah. it was nice having an interaction with you guru santosh and all the best for your future and definitely we we'll look forward that the students will be looking down into france education that i'll definitely connect, connect them with you okay yeah i'll be waiting for that yeah thank you so much guru santosh yeah thank you